Okay, so that was copper. Moving on, iron. Can we use hydrogen to purify iron oxide? No. Very good, Vikram. Does anyone know the reason for that? The reason is really simple. Hydrogen is less reactive, so it cannot displace iron. Now, <clears throat> I'll give you three statements. They will all mean the same thing. Hydrogen is less reactive, so it cannot displace iron. Second statement. Iron is a stronger reducing agent. Iron is a stronger reducing agent. That simply means that iron is more reactive than hydrogen. Hydrogen is a weaker reducing agent. Or hydrogen is a stronger oxidizing agent. Same thing again. That hydrogen is less reactive than iron. So a stronger oxidizing agent is a less reactive metal, a more reactive non-metal. Okay. So these terms all mean the same thing and you should understand them. All right. So moving on, what do we do with iron? If we cannot use uh, hydrogen, we can use copper. Sorry, carbon. What's wrong with me? So extraction of iron. Now, because iron is obviously a really, really useful thing, we have been, we perfected this method many, many, I would say thousands of years ago. So <clears throat> it's just that in, with the modern world, we just do it at a bigger scale and with better technology. But the underlying process has been the same. So how does it work? We start with iron oxide. That is our ore that comes from hematite. But it also has impurities. And those impurities are mainly silicon dioxide. So we have to take care of them as well. Okay. So what do we add? We add carbon because it is our reducing agent. And we add calcium carbonate. It removes impurities. So calcium carbonate is there to remove the impurities and iron oxide and carbon will react together. So this is one pair. This is one pair. Don't forget about it. We have to take care of this. Otherwise, it will mess up our iron and iron will not be useful and we will not be able to make good steel. So it's very, very important that you remove SAO2 from this. There are other things as well, but we are going to simplify this by just saying we have two pairs of things. One iron oxide and its reducing agent carbon. One impurity is silicon dioxide and its removing agent calcium carbonate. And all of that together is called charge. All of this. And we are going to add this charge to this long, big machine, which is usually four or five stories high, but it can be much higher. And we add the charge here. Okay. This thing is called blast furnace blast furnace has many many holes in its walls through which hot oxygen gas is pushed in so hot oxygen will be coming here from coming here like basically these pipes in the walls they push hot oxygen gas out okay so that's hot oxygen gas <laughs> hot air mainly but oxygen is what reacts there and now what do we do? We let this thing fall. High temperature, the charge is let to go and we have hot oxygen rising up. <clears throat> so a bunch of things are going to happen. Does heat do anything to this one? <laughs> if you heat this thing, not to a very high temperature, just like 1000, 1200, Maybe it will break down by thermal decomposition. This one does not. You're right. It might, but we should always check for this. This one does not break down due to thermal decomposition because the bonding is really strong. This one does not. This one does not. This one does. So first of all, we're going to see a thermal decomposition. So calcium carbonate 
breaks down, gives us calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Usually, people don't do this reaction right away. They always assume it to be on the third category, which is fine. I mean, they're all happening at the same time. Many, many reactions all happening at the same time. At high temperature, these pair will start to react. What do they do? We get carbon. We also have high temperature. What does carbon do at high temperature with hot oxygen? It will make carbon dioxide. <laughs> Right? But carbon dioxide, what does that do at high temperature with carbon? At high temperature, this carbon can react with carbon dioxide and make carbon monoxide. So, what's happened is that we added carbon with oxygen, high temperature, this reacted with that. This will not react with oxygen, this will not react with oxygen, this will not react with oxygen. But carbon will. And when carbon reacts, we get carbon dioxide. Will any of these react with carbon dioxide? No, this one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one doesn't. This one does. So that makes carbon monoxide. Now, will any of these react with carbon monoxide? This one does. So iron oxide reacts with carbon as well as carbon monoxide. And we get carbon dioxide plus iron. The difference is in balancing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's balanced. So <clears throat> we have gotten iron out. What did we have? We had ca carbon dioxide. Nothing reacts with that. But carbon. We have carbon monoxide. This reacts with that. We get iron out. So this broke down, gave us carbon, calcium oxide. Let's see, does anything react with calcium oxide? This one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one doesn't, this one does. So silicon dioxide reacts with calcium oxide and makes calculators. I'm kidding. Uh, it makes this thing which is called slag. So the slag and hot iron, they're going to fall down and we collect them over here. So there's iron and there's slag. So there's tabs here through which we can get these out. So slag is usually of high density. So this is slag, which is taken out and iron, which is also taken out. <laughs> it's very hard to memorize these reactions. So don't memorize these reactions. How do you work with them? You try to see what's happening. Always look at your reactants in any chemical situation. You have all these four and you have oxygen. Try to see which one will react with what. Oxygen reacts with this. So do that reaction. What does it produce? Calcium, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reacts with this. Oh, sorry, carbon dioxide. Yeah, it reacts with this. Makes carbon monoxide. Will carbon monoxide react with anything? Carbon monoxide reacts with this. It also reacts with oxygen, but we have zoomed zoom. Kar liya, no? So this reacts with this. This reacts with this. Two pairs of reactions done. Then, does calcium carbonate do anything in hot temperature? Yes, it produces calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We have already seen carbon dioxide doesn't react with any of them. But does this react with anything? Yes, it reacts with this. So if you know all the things that you have, you can easily be like, okay, this will react with that. I should write it down. This will react with that. I should write it down. <coughs> okay. So that is how you can write these equations. But if you are unsure, then you can always remember the order of reactions that, okay, car carbon is going to react with oxygen, make carbon dioxide, which is going to break down make carbon monoxide using carbon, which is going to basically do redox reaction. Then that carbon and the carbon monoxide, which are both reducing agents, they are going to give us iron. Iron's extraction is done here. The rest of it is just taking care of impurities. So you can also break it down into two parts, one part for iron and one part for impurities. <clears throat>